once they swim and they catch a fish, that little fish is not going to give up easily. So it's going to be slippery and it's going to be squirming and trying to get away. And those little, those little um, barbs or pieces of skin that are pointing backwards into their throat help guide that fish straight down and have grab hold of it. Since all they cool. are using their beaks. It is very cool to see the inside cool. of a penguin's mouth. We found to be doing all mm -hmm. those jobs like recording whale sounds, sounds, taggy dolphins, all that stuff. Well, and you get to do a lot of that cool stuff when you're in college, doing internships and going and helping your professors do really cool stuff. Um, I've had friends and that have gotten to do that, that have done research on grizzly bears, and I have had friends who have traveled to Alaska and they've studied the um, studied at fish hatcheries, and in the meantime, I've gotten to go out and study whales and everything too. So they've gotten to do a lot of stuff. It's important to protect to protect the penguins. Ooh, that's a good question. You know, I think it's important to protect. I mean. All these, all species of animals, because if we if we don't, then they could disappear and be gone. And your kids growing up would never be able to see a penguin. Wouldn't that be awful? Yeah. Or your children's childrens, or down the road. Um, and to well, be I would never, probably never have got the stale or sea cow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all of these, because there are species that um, are extinct and are gone forever. So it's really important for us to manage the population uh, as best we can and to help them if we can. So all penguins are protected uh, under the AMR treaty and some penguins are endangered or threatened and some are not. Um, so it just depends on, on the species but uh, people are learning more and more about penguins and learning more and more about how to protect them. Um, and nowadays if uh, there, if for any reason you know, we keep track of all the animals in, in captivity, and we know all of their um, history. So we knew who their moms and dads were and everything. And so they can actually, there's a person who takes care of that, and it's, they're, they're what's called a stud book keeper. And they keep track of everybody's history. And so we know if one particular penguin should or should not mate with another penguin. Right. Yeah, and then that way we keep the animals in captivity, we keep their genes really strong and healthy and vibrant, and that way we can keep the animals in captivity in good shape. Right. What is your favorite part about penguin training? Mm. Working with penguins. I think that it's rarely ever the same. There's always something going on, and if it's not, there's something around the corner. So. Right now, a month ago, there wasn't a whole lot going on, but I was getting ready for breeding season to start, and now breeding season's here, and they're carrying rocks, and they're um, courting each other, and so you're getting to see a lot of that going on, and then hopefully we'll get eggs, and then after that, we'll get to experience eggs and maybe chicks, and then, whoo, after all that's done, then you get, you go into that um, molting season. Remember I told you about? Yeah. Right after breeding season comes molting season, so it's it's rarely a dull moment around here. Molting, and the other great thing is that we have some tail feathers down here, and penguin tail feathers are. This is a gentoo. Gentoos have, have are a member of a special family called brush tail penguins, mm -hmm. and their penguins their tails are very very stiff, and they almost these are all broken off and ratty because they molted them and they grew new ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you feel how stiff they are? They're like almost little darts. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. almost. And they remind me a lot of um, yeah, uh, woodpecker tails. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, very, very stiff and, and, uh, and firm.